thing. Good afternoon, world. Good evening. Um, sorry, I didn't cut my value down. Give me one moment. It is super hot. Sorry, I was not prepared. I have everything showing. So today, um, just on this lovely Sunday afternoon, relaxing, you know, everybody probably already cooked dinner, sitting back chilling. I decided this morning, uh, my assistant was like, hey, you know what? Maybe you should give the feedback that you give in private because, um, you know, when the people inbox me their questions, I post them. No one knows where it's coming from. You know, and I give them, hey, Jamal, thanks for tuning in. And I give them the feedback, you know, in the inbox or in the email. So I decided, hey, let's talk about it today. You know, just to, to recap and see what's going on. Um, one did stick out to me um, that I wanted to um, start off with since it is Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, we do have to be mindful of the individuals that are in our lives. Um, you know, we have to love them. We have to support them. You know, and everyone is not the same. That's what makes all of us different. And that's what makes this world the world. Because if all of us were the same, then what's the purpose? So Mental Health Awareness Month, remember to love everyone that you can. No reason to be mean. Try to be kind. And if you can't be, just stay a distance. Um, one of the questions, and I kind of went way back um, and found this one. But the rest of the questions, I'm going to let my assistants just go on the page and just you know, scroll and just find one. Um, do you give up on a person with a mental illness if they are refusing treatment and it's affecting your relationship with them, such as friends, loved ones, etc.? That was a tough one. Um, and I said, no, um, you should not give up on them. However, if it has been constantly where you're trying to get them help and they're refusing and they're acting out and it's starting to affect your life, your livelihood, then your mental health, then maybe you should love them from a distance. You know, um, check on them, make sure things are okay. You know, things that's pertinent to their life. But if it's starting to affect you, then just love them from a distance. You don't have to be angry. You don't have to hate them because you understand that it's something that's, uh, a chemical imbalance that's going on. So that's what my feedback was. Y'all remember, make sure y'all chime in, give you guys this feedback. And I also wanted to share something else before we start with um, the questions. Um, remember that I'm not a counselor. These are strictly my opinions, but a lot of people such as myself learn from others. You know, I get advice from others because I like to see it from different perspectives. The way I think may not be the way someone else thinks. So when you see it from someone else's point of view, it may make you think a little deeper and say, hey, I never thought of that. You know, maybe I should try that. Maybe that'll work. Maybe it'll help work, you know, in your favor if you just try it a different way. That's why I feel like posting these questions, no one knows where it's coming from, but they're able to read it. That's why we appreciate you guys' feedback. You just don't know when you're helping the next person. So, yeah, a lot of people like myself like to get advice from a plethora of people. And that don't mean they're going to use it. That doesn't mean I use it. However, it helps me see things a different way. A different way. Thank you, Jamal. So, Miss Stacy, I am ready. I did write some down. Would that be considered cheating, y'all? I want. I like to do stuff spontaneous, abruptly. You know, just you know, going off the top of the dome. But I kind of remember what I already answered anyway in the inbox. But I'm gonna let her do it. She's not gonna use my sheet. It's right here. I'm ready. All right. Being that Mother's Day is next Sunday. This question is, is it necessary to get your significant other a Mother's Day gift, even there, even though there aren't your kid's mother? Yes. Get them a Mother's Day gift, preferably Chanel. <laughs> but yeah, I think it is right if you get them a Mother's Day gift. You're dating. Are they dating this person? I can't remember if they said they were dating. It was just a general question. Yeah. It was just a general question. Um, if you're involved in this person's life, um, then yes, I think you should. Um, get them a Mother's Day, Day gift. Jamal, we're just going, uh, we're recapping, going over questions that was posted on the page. Maybe some people didn't see the questions. So we're just recapping and maybe someone can learn from it and maybe this is something they're going through. It's just a helping, helping out. What's the next one? All yes, right. you should get them a Mother's Day gift. Why is it there a big difference in a man being fed up than a woman's being fed up? 
I think, and this is my opinion, be sure to chime in if you guys like, um, the reason there's a difference between a man being fed up and a woman being fed up, because I feel like we put our emotions in it. Not saying men don't, you get what I'm saying? But I think we really go in a little deeper. And again, I could be wrong, but I think we go in much more deeper than the men do. I think and we take a little bit longer. We take, okay, that's a good way to put it. April hit it on the head. We take a little longer. We, we, we put up with more because certain things that we can handle, the men can't handle. If I cheated and he finds out, guess what? He might not give me a second chance. He might be gone. But we as women, sometimes we tend to get second chances. So, yeah, we'll put up with it a little more. So, that's why once we're fed up, we, we're fed up. Females are emotional. Men are emotional. They just had it. That's all that is. Okay, if a man or woman have a best friend of the opposite sex, do you need to be friends with them also? If um if your man has a oh if a male or a female have a friend of the opposite sex, should you be best friends with them too? Um, I feel like I should have knew that coming into the relationship. Don't spring it on me months down the road saying, oh, and by the way. I have a best friend. No, they wanted to know, should you become friends, friends with, with their too? best friend? Oh, so if they did introduce us, yeah. yeah, I think we should become friends. Well, we don't necessarily have to be friends, but I do think we should have some type of communication. I think I should get the invite when you get the invite. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't just call and invite him. Invite us. Yeah. There should be, there should be some um, communication. There should be some type of, if not friendship being cordial, some type of association going on. But yeah, definitely. We need to have a few encounters together. Why does strangers... I'm drinking wine cooler today, y'all. I'm taking it low. That's rude. No, she said it was rude. I'm sorry. Why do strangers support quicker than the people you know? Why do strangers support quicker than the people you know? Um, for one, it can go a couple ways. Maybe the people you know don't, don't like what you're about. You get what I'm saying? Maybe it's something. Maybe it's something that they're not too fond about you. You get what I'm saying? And maybe they don't want to support you because of that. The strangers don't know you. So maybe they're quicker to support because of that. Or maybe some people want to be where you're at. It's just a lot of reasons, um, you know, strangers support quicker than the people you know. Bottom it, line, a stranger don't know you. The, yeah. April said, bottom line, a stranger don't know you. So um it takes a lot to give people chances and to um you know kind of help them build i don't know some people just don't have it in their nature some people don't want to see you strive for greater or be greater well, if they're not already about. Huh? that's what i was saying some people know what you're already about and not going to support you i mean that's just what it is <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. why do men think women are the master of cheating why do men think women are the masters of cheating? Um, I think they think that. I don't even know if that makes sense. But I think they think that because um, the statistics, the stereotype feel like men always get caught cheating. So they automatically assume that we are better at it. However, we are. Um, the reason people may think we're better at it is because we kind of, we don't sporadically just go and you know what, I'm about to chill with such and such tonight. On a spur of moment, I already have an idea that maybe, um, you know, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to call all my friends up, let them know, hey, blah, blah, blah. If this happened, if this happened, we're going over scenarios. We let them know if the ifs, the what ifs, the whatevers. So we plan our stuff out a little better than men. That's what I think. So I think that's why they think we're the master of cheating because we don't really get caught because we kind of, you know, we play our thing out right. Y'all just go ahead and do it. When you think, you know, when it happens, it happens for y'all. Okay. How do you confront your significant other about their drug habit that they think that you don't know about without making them feel less of a person? I'm going to try to repeat it. How do you, because they always get caught. Exactly, Daisha And Deidre, maybe they know what you're not right. You're right about that. <laughs> because they're dumb. <laughs> but um, repeat it, Stacey. I'm sorry. How do you confront your significant other about their drug habits that they don't that they think that you don't know about without making them feel less of a person? How do you confront your significant other about their drug habit that they don't think that they don't know think you know about without making them without feel making less, them feel less, less of a person? Um, well, you need to approach them in definitely a loving manner and a supporting manner. 
you know, letting them know that, you know, um, you don't have to be nasty about it and rude. Let them know that you support them. See where their head is at. If you see that they're, they want to, you know, change, they want to get help. They, they don't want to do this, but they can't help it. I say support them as much as you can. However, do not be stupid. Now, if it's starting to interfere in your relationship, if it's starting to, you know, things are just, just tell them if you live that person, if you live that person. Um, yeah, you got to tell them that, you know, but you also have to be supportive, you know, let them know, look, John, um, you know, I've noticed some changes or what have you. I'm here for you. However, I know this isn't a path you want to take. Let's go to counseling. Let's do this thing together. You know, but if you see they're not trying to budge or something like that, then Ultimately, you have to do what's best for you. At the end of the day, you have to love yourself first. So I say try to be supportive as much as possible first. But if, if they're not budging and they're not trying to, you got to love yourself first. So they might have to hit the road, Jack. That's a long one. Ooh, it's a long one. I might can't repeat this. Can y'all hear Stacy when she reading the questions? Because I might can't repeat this long one. Okay, go ahead, Stacy. I've been paying child support for a child only to find out he's not mine. I have been doing this for 13 years. Oh. Should I try to see about getting my money back through court? But the twist is, me and my wife had a threesome. <gasps> Should I be mad at her or myself? When, Can I answer that? Yes, answer it. I would like Unless to answer the email. I don't remember. You've been paying child support for 13 years? That's your child. That child only know you was dad. You signed Wait a minute certificate. now. What yeah. if he was paying child support, but the child don't know him as daddy? You but can pay child support. But if you've been in that child's life for 13 years, that child only know you as yeah. daddy. So, I mean, you would have to weigh your options is that in that case, is money really worth that child being hurt and being left alone after 13 years? It's not fair. Y'all did the threesome. That's all I can say. You can't be mad yeah, at I mean, you just... <laughs> You put yourself in that situation, yeah. I mean, pretty much you just have to deal with it and just put yourself in that child's shoes. In that shoes. child's shoes. At the end of the day, it's yeah. about the kid. It's about the kid at the end of the yeah. day. And I'm quite sure if you thought that was your child, you have love for that child. I'm quite sure you don't want to see that child hurt. Right. And that child know you as daddy, then you're daddy. You're at daddy. At the end of the day, regardless if it's blood or not. And there's plenty of it's... people that take care of kids that's not blood related. Exactly. So... At this point, the 13 years is already 13 years ago. Just continue to do what you've been That's doing. five more years. Yeah. Ago. Yeah, just continue to do what you're doing. Kudos to you. Is it okay to smoke weed with your child? Is it okay to smoke weed with your child? I would say no. Um, you know, the kid may be grown. You know, to each his own. Again, these are just my opinions. Please feel free to share yours. I see Deidre said if you, oh, about the um, significant other drugs, you have to be gentle with the situation and let them know you're there for them, um, that you'll help them get out, get help. Exactly, Deidre. Um, he wouldn't get it back anyway. Ex ex exactly, D. That was 13 years ago. It is gone. So, but, um, okay, Stacey, what would you say? <laughs> you just scroll to another one. Oops. Oh, yeah. Oops. What was it, April? You remember? God, I might be. <laughs> oh, smoke weed with your child. Oh, would you smoke weed with your child? Um, <laughs> I, I personally, I wouldn't. However, I'm not knocking the next person that decides to do that because uh, I've heard some people say, I'd rather smoke with my child. Let's say he's of age. That's what we're going to say here. I'd rather smoke with my child than he get it from somewhere else or something like that. So to each his own, just I, I wonder, and we'll never know, um, but... Do the child respect the mom, you think, or the dad if they're smoking with them? Do I don't know. I don't know. If they're grown, I guess they're going to do it anyway if they want to do it. Don't Deidre said, me. hell no, that's don't ghetto. Um, Deidre said, um, you're not getting the money back. The child is innocent. Continue to be the parent to them. Make sure when they're older that they know you're not their biological parent. That's so true. But yeah, to each his own with the smoking marijuana with your child, I just wouldn't do it personally, but hey. Me, personally, I wouldn't do it because, well, the way I raise my kids, I try to shield them from doing certain things. Right. And I'm not perfect, but I don't want them to know everything that about I'm me. Doing, yeah. Everything about Let them be perfect in, your, in their in eyes. Their eyes. <laughs> right. So I refuse to do something. No. Exactly. Tanisha, um, boundaries need to be set. All right, Stacey. All right. 
If your best friend is making poor decisions, would you allow them to keep doing them? Because it's their problem, or would you check them? Check them. You would check them. The key word in that one was best friend. But check them. What if that best friend has an attitude problem and don't never want to hear nothing? Nobody. Else. I think we talked about that. Remember free. with the friend thing. And they get mad when you approach them about certain situations. At least you did your part. That's the way I see it. You well, did your part. One thing I can't say, if I do, it now this is kind of an iffy subject. If I do catch one of my friends or anybody cheating on them, I'm not going to tell them. Phew, child. We're going to have to, can we put that one in the parking lot? Because I really would like to discuss that one. We might have to save that one for another show. Uh, matter of fact, Wednesday night show would be. The topic is, if you saw your friend's boyfriend cheating, you would not tell them. Nope. Don't answer. Don't say no more. That is going to be Wednesday's topic, okay? If you caught your friend boyfriend cheating, you wouldn't tell them. And we're going to leave it there. Um, D said, my kids are grown and don't smoke anymore, but I have. That's what I said to each his own. Hey. And they probably give you the utmost respect. So it just depends on the parent. I'm not knocking no one who does that. It's just not my preference. And all of them are over 21. Check them on their decisions. I agree, Jamal, about the friends. Check your friends on their decisions because I feel if you're friends, you should be able to go to them about things. And I know we did a topic before, birds of a feather flock together. That's to a certain point. I don't do everything my friends do. They don't do everything I do. However, let's be real. At the end of the day, people are going to, you're going to be guilty by association. You get what I'm saying? So you got to be mindful of the crowd you choose. Unfortunately, that's the way society is. So yeah, I'm going to check my friend if she's doing something that's just not right. Regardless if it's affecting me or not, regardless if people know about it or not, if it's just not right or I feel like she's making poor decisions, we're going to have to have a conversation about it. My boyfriend confessed that he cheated on me and now has HIV. The only thing is, I knew I had it and just didn't tell him. Ooh, Should I come clean I remember that one. or let, let him take the blame? Mm. All right, I'm going to try to repeat this one because, hey, Tony. Um, this one was a tough one. It kind of broke my little heart when I was responding. Okay, the question was, my boyfriend told me, confessed, confessed that, he that he's HIV positive, right? And... and he cheated on me. The only thing was with this situation, because I remember it because it was so like, ooh. Um, she was already HIV positive, and she didn't tell him. So, um... Should she come I, clean or let him take the blame? Listen, that was a touchy subject. Honestly, I didn't respond to her to the next day. <laughs> because it was like... Whoo, child, you know, don't have me in court or something. I don't know. But it was just, um, I told her she had to, I told her she had to come clean. Like, how could you live with yourself knowing you were HIV positive prior to even getting with this man? Like, that's something you have to discuss. She's going to have to be careful, too, because that might. And see, that was a conversation we had. The fear of finally coming clean. You didn't know his outcome. You didn't know how he was going to react. So that was a big situation as well. But um, yeah, I, I felt she needed to come clean because that that's major. That's, you know, and then now you're looking at you knew and you, you had sex with me. Now is that a crime? You know, now I'm not getting charged for this. So it was a real bad situation, but a learning um, lesson for everyone. If something ever comes up and it can't be cured and, and you decide to date, I feel like you don't want to put your business out there so soon. However, if you know this is someone you plan on sleeping with and being with, I think you should be upfront and honest about it, whether it's herpes or AIDS or syphilis, whatever, something, yeah, you need to, um, let them you need to let them know. That's only fair. Is it okay to allow your boyfriend or girlfriend to discipline your child that you had from a previous relationship? Is it okay to allow your boyfriend or girlfriend to discipline your child that you had in a previous relationship? If he's my boyfriend, um, yeah, that's crazy, D. But it's it's real. You know, people people don't tell the truth. So, you know, that's something you're embarrassed about. That's something you don't want people to know. What if it don't work out with him? And what if he leaves as soon as you tell him? And now you're fearful that he's going to tell the world? You know, so, I don't know. That was just a hard situation. But, um... 
that's when you get them to sign legal documents. <laughs> Look, um, what do you call it? Things where they can't say anything? I can't remember the word. Confidentiality. <laughs> but um, I'm sorry, Stacy. What was it? <laughs> Would you allow your boyfriend or girlfriend? Would, would you allow your boyfriend or girlfriend to um, discipline, discipline your, child? your child? Um, I feel like if they're your boyfriend or girlfriend, you trust that man or woman. Um, it depends on how long y'all been in a relationship, first of all. Because in a, a relationship, that I doubt if they're meeting the children early on. Anyway, if they didn't meet them till like a year or two later, they still haven't built a, built a bond, you know, enough to... Um, lay hands now however if they see that child doing something hey tell them to stop you know what have you but as far I feel like they have to be around that child long enough to be able to discipline in certain ways there's levels to it so yeah they should be able to discipline but then again no it depends on how long y'all been together how long they've been in these kids life so it just depends on the situation so you can't just answer that straight out um, he said hell nah better not touch my babies so John, me and you've been dating a year, okay? And then you finally introduced me to the children. I've been around them another two years. We live in the same house together. You got custody of your kids. I'm there. We've been living in this house for two years. I can't spank behind if they're acting up or doing whatever. I can't, I can't do it. I just can't touch them. I can just have to tell you. And see, now that goes to... That goes to now, I feel like, and again, these are my opinions, they feel like they may not respect me in a certain sense because Freema can't do nothing when daddy not home. She got to wait daddy get home or she got to call him on the phone or something like that. I just feel like there has to be some type of maybe conversation. Maybe all of us have a conversation if they're old enough to understand I'm it. i this way. But, if you don't trust me enough to discipline your kids, then you don't need to be with me. Yeah, why can't no one, you know, if you've been in this person's uh, life for a couple years and they've been in your children's life, why y'all saying no, nobody can't hit their child, period? Is it that you don't child. trust them? You think they're going to hit them a little harder because they're not theirs? What's the reason besides saying no? Depends on the type of discipline. That's why I say it's levels to it. What's the, what's, what's the reason for saying no if you've been in this relationship? They're been Y'all been together for three years as a family, and they still can't pop behind if they need to. Even if they're acting as the opposite parent. Hmm? And they married. Yeah, they're active. Yeah, they're active. Married. That's what I'm saying. We're living together. We've been yeah. together for two years in the house. You're gonna say dating on the outside. Like, you say that's yeah. different. And you're talking about boyfriend on her side. Okay, John. I can give you the same scenario though. She been with this man for how many years? He didn't been around the children. And then once they physical discipline, no verbal is um was to a certain extent. To a certain extent. So, I, I guess I need somebody to answer the question. Well, if we've been I'm, together for years, it's still a no? It's still a no. Personally, I've been with mine for years. He's been around my son since he was two years old. My son is now 18 years old. He disciplined him just, just like, like his he is. Because he does everything from doctor appointments and everything. He does everything his dad would do. His biological dad should do. Right. So I guess this is different. It depends on the situation. Yeah. The situation. It depends on the situation. But he has so. never put hands on him. Now he will put him on punishment, take his phone from him, stuff like that. But he's never hit him. Hit him. Yeah. You don't always have to hit. We was watching this movie today. It was kind of like, wow. But we'll talk about that another time. All right, Stacey. You still saying no, John? Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you just ain't with it. I've been dating this lady for almost a year. However, she's been separated for two years. And I'm ready for marriage. But she's not ready to divorce. What okay. She she's been... He, separate, they've been separated for two years. They've been her dating her, for a year. Okay. But she's not ready to divorce. Okay, so she's been in a relationship with this guy for two years. She's been separated. Oh, she's been in a relationship for a year. Year. She's, she's been, been in a relationship two. for a year. Hold on. I think it's because I have a little girl and would not want a man that's not her daddy to touch her. I, I think I get that one. I, you know, now I'm biased. I told y'all my opinions be going all over the place. I can understand it. If y'all getting married, then maybe. I can I can get that too, John. I definitely understand that too. Um, but this young lady has been in a relationship for um uh, oh this man. Oh I'm sorry. This man has been in a relationship for uh, yeah, a year. Been separated, been from, separated his wife. from his wife. No, no. The, the girl female. His girl. He's been dating the girl for a year. 
She's oh, been he's been separated. in a relationship for a year. She has been separated, separated from her husband for two, for two years. years. He's ready for marriage. He's ready for marriage. But she's not ready and she's not divorce. ready to divorce. First of all, I told a year is not enough. I mean, that's just what it is. And but on? it's not necessarily holding on to the divorce. You get what I'm saying? But why? I mean, I don't want to feel like because in the end, I always feel like they're going to be like, oh, you only divorce this person. Because I was pushing you to do it. Do you not really want to do it? Not saying they don't want to do it. You get what I'm saying? But I don't, I think it's more so in my situation. <laughs> I think it's more so let me do it when I decide to freaking do it. No. Don't be rushing me to do nothing. I'm not rushing And you. I'm not saying I'm not going to do it. You I'm, get what I'm saying? But, see, but then you got to look at it. I from... only been, she only been with this guy for how long? A, a year, year, right? A year. What's a year? Well, she's been separated for two years. That should tell you she don't but want if him. This man is exactly, but if this man is serious about marrying you and he don't realize that or whatever, clearly you would think that she <coughs> don't want to. She rather be with her husband How? and having that hope that they might reconcile. That's what would be going in my mind. So because if you were finished with your past relationship. Divorce shouldn't be no issue. It's not. What if it's not an issue in her book? What if? Okay, so they've been separated. What if it's just because I have a friend that's separated? You get what I'm saying? Been separated for years, and it's just like, psh, I mean, you know, it's yeah, like it'll happen when it happens. Going to a new relationship, and this person is very interested in her. How can I take you seriously if you're not doing anything to show then, me that you're interested in me? Then maybe he should leave her. Exactly. That's what it boils down to. If you if you have it in your head that, okay, I can't take this person seriously, even though I know there's no signs of this person being with this person or they don't be around this person, or da, 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 then guess what? That's the way I see it. How you know there's no signs? Do they have communication? There's trust. Do they have children? There's trust. That's what you got to have trust. I'm sorry. All right. She exactly. says she holding on to some benefits of that marriage. What are them benefits, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Stacey, go. All right. I'm beginning to catch feelings for someone who used to be friends with my kid's father. However, mm -hmm. neither one of us have contacted him for years. Is it wrong for us to start a relationship? Nope. <sighs> she says she has been <laughs> having feelings. Beginning to catch feelings. Beginning to catch feelings for someone who used to be friends. Someone used to be friends dad. with the kid's dad. But however, they have not been in contact with that dad for years. Neither one of the parties have been in contact with that dad for years. Who I see that kind of I see that kind of weird. Do I don't know do what makes you happy. At the end of the day, things are happening too fast. People are dying off. If that's the person that make you happy, hell, everything happened for a reason. Even though it didn't happen that way, maybe you ran into that baby daddy and he introduced you to that friend, maybe which is for a reason. Your soulmate. Yeah. So I mean, things happen. How many years? I, <laughs> I mean, things happen in the strangest. I way. guess it, if it was years, but um. I don't know, a soon type thing. No, I just feel I, that my pain. I just I don't know if I could do it. Are you willing to show someone how to love you properly? Yes. Are you willing to show someone how to love you properly? If they're worth it in a lot of more ways and they're just kind of lacking on certain things, I don't see the problem at all. Insurance beneficiary POD. <laughs> exactly, Tony. But yeah, I don't see a problem with um, showing somebody how you like to be loved because everybody likes to be loved differently. And, and if they don't know, and they might not be able to handle it. But if they don't know, you can't expect them to, you know, you do it if they don't know. So I don't think nothing wrong with it. Experience. Now, if they, if you keep having to go over the same thing, and you notice they're not even trying, then there's a problem. That's why she's looking for one. Just do this and whatever you stroke. I got, I, while you looking, let me find one I just pulled off there. Um, I'm thinking about having laser hair removal. What y'all think about that? Laser laser hair removal? Uh -huh. Well, it won't ever grow back. Is that right? Yeah. I say do it. I would. Okay. Should someone who is in a happy relationship take advice from friends who can't even keep That's funny cuz I got that one written down. <laughs> Should someone married take advice from friends who can't keep a stable relationship? I see nothing wrong with it because again, you're going to do what you want to do. 
Maybe that person has been in a relationship already and see signs or can give you some feedback or something like that. Listen, you don't have to take it. You have to take exactly. it. Exactly. You don't have Ooh. to take the advice. Right. I don't see nothing wrong. I hear it a lot. People say, how, could, how can you be around or listen to people that's not in a relationship? Maybe they were in a relationship and maybe they can tell you, well, you know, what was wrong in their relationship. relationship. Well, that's the reason they're not in the relationship. So it's okay, again, to take it, to listen to advice, it doesn't mean you have to and take it. And it is a proven fact. Jamal, don't it don't mean you have to take it, but no. it may be they seeing things or can t open but your eyes to things you didn't notice. It is a proven fact that your IQ drops when you're in love. So who's to say they don't see something that's going on? Right. Maybe they notice things you don't notice. <clears throat> don't mean you have to take the advice. Remember that. If you're in a relationship with someone... And they consistently accusing you of lying, cheating, and always want to check your phone. Why do you stick around? That mean they cheating. Oh, that's what I say too, because that happened to me. Repeat that question, Stacy. If you're in a relationship, if you're in a relationship with, with some, someone, matter of fact, do I got that? I got that on here too. Oh. If someone, if someone constantly accuses you of telling a lie. Why do they stick around? Is that the one you said? Yeah, but I added more words. Oh, she added more words to it. If someone constantly accuses you of telling a lie, why do you stick why do they stick around? Um, April said because they're cheating. <laughs> um you think so? Yeah. My ex accused me of cheating, wanted to check my cell phone, always saying I'm lying. Only for me to look at his phone while he was drunk passed out. And he was asking his wife, could he get That's what a lot of people say. That's what I say. Up for other women. Yeah. A lot of people say the reason you always get accused is because they're the really the ones doing it. Because they their um, conscience. Yeah. Their conscience is eating them up. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I don't no. know. I didn't think so. Or either your conscience is eating you up or it's true. Because you know, women have women intuition. People have routines. Once you break that routine and you know something isn't right. So it could be either or. I agree with what Jamal said. I think it's love. That's why they stick around. Maybe. Not not saying <laughs> I'm only answering the other part. Why do they stick around? I think they they, they, they don't have concrete evidence. Th that's exactly what I was about to say. I think they love you <clears throat> and they're accusing you because they are assuming. And it could be so because they're cheating. They high, or they no, just no maybe they feel it's too good to be true. Or sometimes they, they have the problem. feeling that they have the instinct to cheat and you just call that's them true. Actually do it. That's true. Yeah, you know what they're it. capable of, so now you're all up on it. That may not be the case. Mm -mm. I solved that issue. <clears throat> Crazy to sound. I started cheating. Cause I because you got tired of being accused. I got tired of being accused. And then once I started cheating, I already stopped. So I stopped continuing. Uh -huh. relationship Why ended. is that? When you tell somebody the truth, they don't believe They don't believe you, you but when you tell them a bald face lie. stick around because the sex good. <laughs> then you tell them a bald face lie, they believe it. Um, we're just going over a number of questions that was on the page, but this question was, if someone constantly accuses you of telling a lie, why do they stick around? And I said, because they love that person and I really think they're just assuming they don't really know. So that's why they stick around. But the, uh, the person on the other end is going to get tired of you constantly accusing them and you're going to end up running them away. So if you don't have concrete evidence, then chill out. Do you have another one? While she looking, I have one. Is there really a thin line between love and hate? Yes, yes it is. is. Um, the reason I say it's a thin line between love and hate because you you put so you invest so much in this person. You love this person so much. You feel like they'll do no wrong. And that that thing that they do that just might take you over the head edge and now like psh, you hate them. You hate them. What's the question, Jamal? Okay, John says, so if the woman accuses the man, then it's true. But if the man is the accuser, then he has a guilty conscience. No, I didn't <laughs> say <that>. yeah. <laughs> no, it goes both ways, John. If the if the woman's accusing a the man, then maybe she's doing Wait, her thing. Can I can I explain? Or vice versa. Can I then again explain may not. To John? Yeah, explain to John. Wait. She wanna explain something to you. Okay, John, what a lot of men fail to realize is you all have routines. Hello. Most of the time y'all call patterns. us at the same time of the day. Y'all do the same things. All of a sudden when you switch up, our antennas go up. Mm-hmm. Okay, you start dressing different, smelling different. You your call patterns change. Your texts 
the way you text change. Y'all don't realize y'all do these things, but women are very observant. And yeah. we see these changes. We pay attention. Wow. So when we do see those changes, that's when our antennas go up and then we'll sit there and ask you exactly what's going on with you. Even though we know in our gut something ain't right, right. and somebody is introducing them to something new because you're coming at me in a new way. Yeah. We pay attention to your past. I don't even care if you add an extra spice to your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> We observe. We observe. Everything. We may not say nothing. We gonna sit back because and let watch. me tell you why. That goes with your friends. Don't say nothing. Just sit back and watch. Yep. That's the advice they gonna give them. Yep. Just sit back and watch. Pay attention because we're not gonna hang hey, that because y'all gonna stop. You know. So yeah, we just gonna sit back and observe a little bit. Shirley Murdoch. <laughs> she said yes, it is because A. Shawn and Shirley Murdoch said it. There's a thin line. Why do people treat their partner like shit? Oh, Jamal. Um, okay, maybe, that's relationship. Yeah, yeah, that's a toxic, <laughs> that's a very toxic relationship, and some people do it because that partner allows them to do it, unfortunately, mm -hmm. or maybe they feel like they got something over their head, or maybe they feel like they need them, so they treat them like trash, unfortunately, and that's sad, so that's not cool, no, no not. one should treat anyone as such. And then sometimes when a person do do that, they do that to have control. Um, say for instance, if I know I have a partner with low self esteem, my Not way, go ahead. Yeah, my way of keeping control over them is telling them, you know, ain't nobody else gonna. Want oh my God, that's horrible. I hope well, people I mean, wouldn't people do that. Do that. People actually that's do sad. That. Yeah. Oh my God. That's mental abuse. That's people mental have, abuse. People actually do that to wow. try to keep control wow. over that person. He tried it. <laughs> I don't know why you got that dress on. You know it don't look good on you. Mm, yeah, try that, to keep that's anybody hurtful. Anybody else from saying something to you to boost that self esteem. But you have to have high self esteem for it not to bother you. Cause my twin daddy used to say that all of ain't nobody gonna want you with three kids. Look how you look. Oh, wow. that. But look how hurt are, people. How hurt are people. you living, right, for me? How are ya? Hurt people <laughs> hurt people. My friends tell me that all the time. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. but that's really sad. Something. That's but sad. It has Okay. Um, is it okay for a man to accept a proposal from a woman? Is it okay to accept a, a proposal from a man to accept a proposal from a woman? Of course. I, I think mean, it's romantic. I feel like I think they it's not, a smack in the face. Yeah. It's you not, think it's a smack in the like, face? Yeah, because you like feel like that man don't want to get married? I feel like the woman probably rushing the man to marry yeah. You think she rushing you know, him? What y'all think about that? The thing that I learn so right, right, is right. men want to do everything in a certain order when he's ready go he back to that pattern yeah he would eventually do it but let him take charge so you think he's not taking charge if she proposed she's to him? him she's not allowing him what if it's five years in but that means he's not ready one thing so you think one thing about men if they don't have their stuff in order or be exactly where they want to be they're not going to do it oh I feel that way. I mean, it, why is it always reason. why is on the man to always propose? I mean, what if he is ready? He's just scared to do it. I mean, not scared because he's not ready, but like he don't know how. Maybe he was planning to do it in two weeks, and she just beat him to the punch. But then that goes back. Well, see that that goes back to each his own. I mean, if a woman want to propose to a man and he has no problem with it, then so be it. But, I mean, in today's world, things are different. But the way I was raised and the way I view things, you have to let a man take charge. Just let him be the man. Let him be the one to propose. Yeah, let him be the man. But what if he's her knight in shining armor and it's well, like, I can't I mean, let this man go. So I'm just about to pop the question. going somewhere. I'm just saying she didn't want to take a chance. Well, do you? But if you feel, <laughs> I ain't getting any on person, me. No, I'm not. No, I'm not getting on the knee either. <laughs> and, and if it's been five years and I feel that he needs to propose, we need to have that conversation where he can help me understand why, why we're not engaged. That's, that's true. All right. My best friend hooked me up with her brother, even though she knew I was married but separated. But now I'm pregnant. Do I tell my <laughs> husband or do we swap the best friend first to see if he's the father? I gave some bad advice on this one. I told her to swap. Best friend. I said the same thing. Swab the best friend. I'm sorry. I know that's some bad advice, but hey, swab the best friend. Get him out of the picture if it ain't his. Still together? With the the husband She's and the back with her husband now. 
I mean, if she was sleeping she was with both of them. Yeah, but is she back with her husband? I don't see. I don't ask a lot of questions. But if I mean, if she's not, then she need to be open and just tell both of them. Why? I don't know who the daddy is. They have a clear conscience. You will once you know it ain't one or the other. That um child. Just clear my brother because I don't want him getting hurt. Yeah, just once you know it ain't his child, then go on to the other. And then how would that other one take feel you if, if he's he not a dad? That you, if you know that you were it. still sleeping with your husband, I mean, so no, what? no, no. Now that he knew. Oh, he yeah, he knows. Yeah. Oh, what's that's why I said Swab the best friend, her um brother. Yeah, he knew about the husband. Hey, it's a doggy dog world. Hate could, to say it. Could relationship last uh, with poor sex? Could relationship? Did I write that down? Um, oh, I did. It was one said, "Can sex make or break a relationship?" <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, again, I gave that advice because I feel like, you know, even with the whole shacking up thing, I'm sorry. I know they say you don't supposed to do it. You know, the godly thing to do is to get married first. Da, 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 da. But sex plays a major part in this whole world at the end of the day. Um, not saying you should shack up before you get married, but I would like to know the individual and his ways and his traits and his character as living together to be honest with you that's just the way i see it i do think sex can break a relationship because if we're trying and it's just not doing it for me eventually him or i may stray the other way to get satisfied maybe you can bring in toys i don't know but i think it does play a major part in a relationship so, so you don't think it plays a major part in a relationship you have to think about it and i'm i'm going to put my business out there oh lord yeah, I am going years. to put my business out there, but I was in an accident five years ago, and I ended up fracturing my pelvis bone and everything, so I could not have sex for like six months or whatever. Wow. My relationship was strong enough to where he was still there for me. We had to come up well, with yeah. creative ways and things to do. Because That's the difference. No, it's not. Yeah, because you yeah. have some people that will actually still stray off. Mm. Uh, if you if something happens, and I think that was a question that came but up on one of the panels. Enough? I think that's a question that came up on one of the panels. Something drastic happens, whether it's medication, an illness, something like that, and they can't perform anymore. They're incompetent, if that's the word. You know, or something. Do you but eventually you just think about that? Is, that is the love real? Is it built sex? on just sex? Hopefully not, because hopefully you won't be just getting married or in a relationship just for sex. But I do think it plays a part. It does play a and part. And hopefully, but I like you're saying, my relationship is strong. Hopefully, y'all are built on more than just sex. sex. So if something traumatic happens, they can stick around. But if nothing traumatic happened and it just never, it and just suck from the. That's beginning. what I'm you saying. That's what I'm. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It just, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I just feel like it plays a major part. Not saying you should leave someone if it ain't working, but if you tested the waters before y'all even got there and you know you can't do it, just don't do it. Don't put yourself in a situation you know you can't handle. Not I think I beginning. posted that on my on my page, on my um regular page. Yeah. Stop putting yourselves in situations that's difficult for you to deal with or handle if you know you can't handle it. Especially just don't this do early it. On. This early on. We're going to do one more question, and then we're going to let you guys get back to your Sunday. I really enjoy you guys, to be honest with you. I can't wait till we start back um, being able to do the panel and stuff. Um, if you love that person, then sex is not a part. I agree, because if you're already in love, y'all already there. However, if it's the beginning, and you know, like, I can't see myself doing this for two more years, then you need to go ahead and get gone. Ain't no need to stick around. Okay. Last question. Last question. I have been in an unhappy relationship for over a year and I've been hiding my abuse from my friends and distanced myself from them. I have been in an unhappy relationship for over a year. I have and I've been hiding I've my been hiding my abuse from, from my, my friends. friends. What should I do? What should I do? Hell, leave that abusive relationship. <laughs> leave the if abusive you relationship. If you um can. And I also feel like try to come out at least to one of your friends or something because what I've learned, what I've learned is we tend to forgive, we tend to take back when no one knows, if that makes sense. You get what I'm saying? When you finally fed up and you know you're ready to give up on that thing, I find it easier to give up if I say April, you know, um, 
my boyfriend has been beating me up, you know, for the past two years and I'm just ready to get out of it. It's going to be a little harder for me to take him back because I already know, I already told April, maybe I don't want her to be upset, you know, so maybe it's going to be a little harder as opposed to keeping it bottled in. No one knows. So it's kind of easy for you to forgive. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's the way I kind of see it. I have it. a real life experience. With What's that? One of my Leave the relationship, ex definitely. friends kept it a secret, never told us that he was actually abusing her or anything. She decided to just jump up and leave. Mm. She moved to a new state and everything. He broke, he found out where she stayed to, and that new state broke into her house, waited for her to come home, and he stumped her with a steel toe. Put her in the hospital where she ended up being under Elias' name. Mm. That's when we then found out that she was actually in an abusive, abusive relationship. relationship. But I felt, at the end of the day, everybody do things differently. differently, and everybody accept things differently. If a person comes to me and want to confine in me what's going on, if they decide to go back to that person, I mean, I would... You're going to love them. You're not going to... I'm not going to... Yeah, you're not going to judge them. If but, anything, I'm going to pull that person to the side. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You know how I am. Yeah. I just feel like you need to talk to somebody. somebody. You know, I think you don't keep it to yourself. Don't keep it to yourself. Let and somebody a, help you out. It was a post out, and I was going to post it on my page for, like, when everybody was in quarantine, mm -hmm. saying, inbox me a question about my job, and then tell me to eat, to mail you something. That's why I know that you're getting abused, and oh. I can call the police and give them your address. So they can yeah. Call over I've seen a post like that. Yeah, I think so, I've seen that, so too. If you feel that abused. you're in danger... Inbox me, ask me a crazy question about my job, and I say, okay, I'll mail it to you, and you give me your, your um, mailing address, and I get the police over there to yeah. you. The percentage rate. Of Inbox Stacy about the job, you know, a job, give her your address, and the police can come to you. Because it is a lot of people out there that go through yeah, stuff that we're not aware of, and they're embarrassed. Yeah, and you home, and, 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 and that's what, that goes back to what I was talking about before. A lot of people go to work, that's their outlet. You get what I'm saying? I don't have to be home with him or her. You know, I don't have to get or hit kids. upside my head or whatever. And now some people working from home. Or the kids. Or the kids. Sometimes the kids so, so, you yeah, you, yeah, that's true too. Sometimes your children does it to you. And you know, that's probably somebody outlet and just, yeah, we have to be there for each other. Um, please, please tell someone, leave the relationship before it's too late. Thank you, Tanisha. That's so true. It's so true, but to be honest, it's a lot of individuals. It's hard for them to leave. It's hard mm -hmm. for them to leave. And make it easier if you have someone else that you can help. Right. Them. That's what I was saying. It yeah. makes it easier when you have someone else. You know, so don't try, don't be in it, don't alone. Try to do it alone. You know, and you know, um, a learning opportunity for myself um, I don't like to pry, you know, I don't like to ask a lot of questions. I don't like to feel like I'm being nosy, but I learned from a, a situation that I'll never do that again, especially if we're good, good friends. You get what I'm saying? I feel like it's okay. Not necessarily to pry, but say, Hey, what's going on? I noticed a difference, you know? So, so don't ever feel like you're out of your place by stepping up to the plate and approaching someone when you see there's something different going on in their life, especially if y'all been friends for a long, long time. Uh -huh. And I don't care. I'll do a drive-by. Yeah. And I yeah. Know I we'll pop up. We'll pull somebody to the side if we have but to. But I will show sure enough do a drive-by by the house unexpectedly, unannounced. I know it's your business or whatever, but being a friend. I got a rebuttal to that. Try. I got a rebuttal to that. Um, Jamal said, who's looking for a job? Go to upsjobs.com. I got a oh, real rebuttal. So um, No, he works for UPS. Oh. Yeah. I got a rebuttal for that real quick. Um. So the situation, let's say, is, yeah, we riding by. We popping up because we care about our friends. Mm -hmm. But this dude is crazy. So now are we putting our other half in a situation? If this guy pops up, on, pop off on us or put hands on us, you get what I'm saying? Are we now putting, <laughs> are we now putting our other half in a, in a, in a messed up situation? I'm not going to put my other half in a messed up situation, first off. Second off, if I'm coming by your house and I see some shit ain't right, not, I'm smart enough to know, well, everybody's not like mm -hmm. me. But if I feel that you might be a danger to me, I'm just going to check things out. I'm not going to say anything out the way or whatever. I'm just going to check and see how things are going. Yeah, that's fair. And I mean, if it look like you're uncomfortable, 
you don't want to invite me in, then I automatically know something ain't right. Right. Especially so if they've been inviting yeah, me in. Yeah, been inviting me in. And with girls like that, I know something ain't right. So when I do talk to first. you. Call the friend first? Call no, the friend house you probably I'm not. To? No, I'm not. Especially when we done been friends for 20 years or so. I'm not calling you. Because you're more like family. You're more like my sister. And my sister right here will tell you I'm bullheaded. And yeah, if I feel like I need to get up in her business, she tell me plenty of times. They can back <laughs> off. But if I feel something ain't right, you damn right. I'm pulling up unexpectedly. I'm finding out what's going on. And if she's not inviting me in my house, in her house, then I automatically know something is wrong. Because before, I was always welcome. Yeah. We got to look for signs, too. We got to be yeah. there for each other. I'm not going to say anything to put her in danger, because if I do approach him, they might put her in danger once I leave. Yeah. yeah. But by me going there and looking at then the Then he knows she you got asked. friends that care, too. Exactly. He'll be a little more he or she, because not yeah. women abuse people, too. Yeah. But if I pull up and she acting kind of funny, then I already know what's up. So when I do get to talk to her one-on-one, I can let her know, look, I'm not judging you or whatever, but I'm here if you right. ever need me. Even if you have to come and I kick one of my kids out their room or whatever, you have somewhere to go. You're not right. by yourself. Right. But that's being a friend. That's being a friend. And yeah, I know I can be overbearing sometimes, mm -hmm. but that's just the way I show my love. Your love and your affection. But that's why I say both of us different. Yeah, but Everybody's like I different. say, if she want to stay in an abusive relationship, and some people do like getting knocked upside the head time to time, then more power to you. <laughs> but true. just let me know that you enjoy it. Right. Well, guys, I really enjoyed this segment. You know, just recapping. We have a lot of questions on the page, so in a couple weeks, we'll probably recap again. I appreciate you guys' feedback, joining in, you know, conversing back and forth with me. It's great. I can't wait. It's only up from here. So, until next time, like I said, Wednesday, we will be talking about would you tell your friend if her boyfriend was cheating? And I'm going to say this and in I'm quotations. April myself. said no. So, y'all just remember that. I'm she said she wouldn't tell myself. it. Share, share, share. Please share, 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 follow, like, ask friends and stuff to follow the page. I really appreciate you guys. Until next time, and always remember, you don't know what people are going through at the end of the day. There are a lot of people with mental disorders. Take a step, breathe, but be there for them, please. Even if it's from a distance. But check on your loved ones, check on your friends. Everyone has something going on. Not everyone, but some people have stuff going on. So try to be, yeah, everyone has something going on at the end of the day. Some people handle it different. You know, everyone is not as strong as the next person. However, still still check on your strong friends too now. You know, because everybody don't wear their heart on their sleeve or everybody don't show their emotions or everybody, it, I may appear to be hard and I don't, you know, cry about it. Or I don't go be in a room somewhere. But I still may go through it. So still check on your strong and friends. It's just good to know that you still have people that care. And still, And it feels good to know you still have people that care. So check on people regardless what's going on in their life. Hey, the quick text, just thinking about you, just checking on you, just whatever. So let's remember to do that for each other, okay? All right, until next time, you guys. I thank y'all so much for tuning in. Y'all have a great, 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 wonderful day. Wash your hands. And wash your hands and social distance. Thank you, Jamal. Bye. Bye, everyone.